Welcome back to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. This is part two of the uh, restoration of the Singer sewing machine, the 1910 Singer sewing machine, what we're calling the preservation restoration. In the first part, we uh, as assessed the damage to the machine, we removed the electrical conversion kit, we removed the machine itself, and completely disassembled the, the, uh, the cabinet and the base and did all of the repairs of the loose veneer on the work surface. Today we'll get that uh, unclamped and cleaned off. We'll start to uh, replace any missing veneer. We'll do the missing veneer chips and then we will start on the refinishing of the wood parts after we do a uh, couple of construction issues regarding the drawer frame and the drawer which I'll bring you along for. So stick with us. This is part two. We're making some progress. Let's get on to unclamping that work table. with the result. This was the corner that was completely lifted up, delaminated on both levels. That's down nice and flat. Here's where we had an elevated uh, split that's now nice and flat. Here's the other elevated split that's nice and flat. We had loose veneer all along this edge. It's all down tight so now we're ready to to inlay the pieces we need. And here's the two elevated cracks that we dealt with yesterday and they are nice and flat so lots of success real happy with the results here i'll get on to cleaning this up and after a little sanding i hope you can see just how smooth these are remember these were these were raised up they were like they were like this we got them back down flat and if you remember this entire corner from here to here was double delaminated that's down nice and flat split here went all the way up here if you remember that and this flap was ready to blow off that's down perfectly flat look how tight that seam is same thing here and then all along the edges nice and tight let's get on with some veneer repairs
got this piece of veneer rough cut out and what is important to note is that the grain slopes down in this direction from high to low and even though I don't have a piece of veneer that's got this exact same grain pattern this does have the grain so when I cut it I cut it at this angle so, so this grain line here and here matches the angle of these grain lines here and here's one of the veneer repairs from this morning you see we cut it along all I do is just take a sanding block in this case I'm just going to sand that back flush with the edge at the top and that should give you a rough idea how this is I know it's not focusing quite right but we'll get that nice and flush and get these sanded down we'll be done with these veneer repairs and there you go that's how they look when they're done all right let me get the rest of them finished up and I'll bring you back And while I was at it, I just took my block plane and knocked down this ridge. The jointer would have taken care of this too, but while I was at it, I figured, why not? Okay, so now we've got that pretty well cleaned off and ready to be jointed. Let's go to the jointer. And I hope you can see how nice and smooth that uh, joiner is making this piece of wood. All right, let me finish up with this, and then we'll, go, we'll move on to the table saw. And that's going to fit exactly like we want it to. Now all we got to do is cut out these grooves. So let me take some measurements for the depth and height of these grooves. We'll run them right across the back of the, uh, of the piece. I think I'm going to face this, this side out so it's older. We'll run it right across the back. And then, yeah, that's how it was done there. And then they just cut it out. So we're going to keep this side out. You can see that that is nice and old looking. Matches this. And this is finished. I'd have to scrape all that finish off. So we're just going to turn it around and put it in like that. Okay, let me get some measurements and we'll get these grooves cut. Well, I'm sitting here drinking my tea after lunch, and I thought maybe I'd kind of catch you up on where we are with this project so far. We've got all the repairs done, all the veneer repairs on the drawers, the door, the, I'm sorry, the drawers, the drawer case, the tops, that were all taken care of early this morning. They've all uh, dried, and they've been sanded and trimmed, and, and they're ready for, uh, for the next step. We did the repair to the drawer case. We made the... Uh, the cross piece that was missing, we drilled it out so it matched the hole above. So that's taken care of. So I think the next step is to get the finish off of all the wood. 
Now, I was able to sand the finish off by hand off the, the main top. We'll see if I can do that uh, with the other pieces. If I have to use stripper, I will, but I think I'd just rather sand it off. And then when everything is sanded off, the last thing I want to do today is get some oxalic on that top. See if we can lighten up that stain. If it's ink, it's probably not going to get light, but it, it might be something else and it might work. It's worth a shot. The owner has asked me to give it a try. Uh, I sent the electrical stuff off with the owner to have that rewired so it's safe for her. I think that was an excellent decision on her part. And then she's also asked me to disassemble, wire brush, and paint the entire base. So we bought ourselves another full day on this project with that request, but I think that's the right thing to do as well. So that's where we are. <clears throat> as soon as I finish my tea, I'm going to uh, start to get the finish off all these pieces. And right now I'm just uh, using the oscillating sander with 120 grit. See if we can get these pieces sanded off. And you can see that chillax coming right off. So let me get to work and I'll bring you back. And the top is all repaired. It's been sanded. And I'm going to put some oxalic on it to see if we can get some lightning on that big stain, which I will bring you around and show you. And this here is what we're hoping will lighten up. And this is a solution of oxalic acid and warm water. And we put it on the entire top and let it dry. Well, there's everything all sanded off. I left intentionally the front drawer so I can use it for color matching. I've got a real good idea how to duplicate this color, but I want to make sure I keep something original. Once I'm comfortable with it, if I have to, I can uh, sand that off. It'll only take a minute or two. But you can see the drawers, they've all been repaired. They've all been sanded. There's the drawer casings. I took and roughed up this hole just a little bit so it matches this one a little bit better. This is done. I very lightly sanded the front of these cases so they would stay old. Here's the the tops and the collars and the lid and you ready for the biggest surprise of the day? How about that? Look how much that lightened up with the oxalic and that's still damp. So I'm thinking that uh, once that completely dries that may sand completely out which is huge. Well that was a good day's work. And that's going to be it for part two of this video series. In the next part, we're going to get it colored, we're going to get it top coated, and then in part four, we'll get the base taken care of, get this thing reassembled, and get it out of here. So thanks for hanging out with me in the shop today. Appreciate you watching part two. Part three is going to follow very shortly. So from our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia, best regards. Thanks for watching. See you next video. Take care. Bye.